Hey, Cameron here with the Sea Butters channel, and guess what? It's Surface season, and I'm pretty excited because we've got a brand new Surface Pro device to take a look at. Uh, you know, this channel was the first to discover and publish that a simple USB fan could really boost the performance of the Surface Pro 3, and we did it again with the Surface Pro 4. We saw that there was more um, performance to be had by cooling the chassis of the device. And now we're taking a look at the new Surface Pro, and we're going to contrast it against the Surface Pro 4. So we're going to take these two devices, old versus new, and A, examine the throttling characteristics of the new device and contrast them to the Surface Pro 4. Now this is the i7 device. We've got i7, 512, 16 gigs of RAM on both of these, but one is Skylake and one is Kaby Lake. Uh, it's got a die process shrink and it's more efficient. So will that be enough to stop this device from throttling completely without the need of any fans of any sort? Let's find out. We're going to look at the both of them side by side and it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Let's do this. Okay guys, here we go. Now I just want to point out a few things before we get started. I've customized the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility to show us the package temperatures. Uh, which is indicated by the green line on the graph and also we're going to be taking a look at the CPU core which is the orange line. We're going to be looking at the graphics processor frequency which is the purple and also the package TDP which is 2 watts. Now the package TDP, TDP is one of the most important things to watch during this video because the package TDP, the more watts available to the device the more power it can push through the system. Uh, so if it's exceeding a certain TDP limit, it will pull your clock speed down, it will pull your graphic clock speed down, and you won't get as much performance. So those are the key indicators to look at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a benchmark, and I'm just going to let it roll so we can see how things work out. And you can see while it's idling, we've got 36 degrees on KB and 38 on Skylake on the, on the left. So old is already running a little bit hotter. The voltage is also a little bit higher between the two devices, um, so that also is the indicator of performance. So let's go ahead and start with the benchmark and see what happens. One, two, three. So I should note that these two devices have a little bit different processors. This one can go up to 4 gigahertz on the new. The old one can only go up to, I think it's a 3.2 or so. So, boom, power limit throttling already took effect. Um, both of the CPUs between these two devices are staying pretty low, um, but one of the interesting things is the graphics frequency is a lot higher on this side. And the temperature is still cooler on the, the new device. Anytime you see that yellow flash, means you, there's been a power limit throttle. The other thing to note is this is using a full 30 watts of TDP, where the TDP on the, uh, the old version only goes up to 25. So that was pulling 30 watts initially, which is a big performance boost. So you can see already this is running 64 degrees and the old one is running at 73. Now I'm going to let this kind of run, but already check out the benchmark. We've got 43 frames per second on the right hand side and 37.8 frames per second on the left hand side. And we've seen a bit of power limit throttling kicking in off and on on this device. So look right now at the processor graphics. We've got 600 megahertz versus 900 megahertz. And the core is also higher on the KB Lake. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let, let things roll and just kind of see where these things settle in. One of the major things to look at is that TDP number as well. So you can see the package TDP on the old version can only handle 14, 15 watts at this point where this side is still pushing 25 watts of power. That's pretty cool. The other thing of note is the fan on the SP4 
is going kind of crazy here on the left hand side. The fan's running on the new SP4, but the sound characteristic of the fan, I can't even hear it over the SP4 fan. So that's pretty amazing that they've, it seems like they've really restructured uh, the cooling solution on the new Surface Pro, and it's pretty incredible. The other thing to look at, check out that green line. It's going straight where this one has been pulled back. That is the temperature of the package. What that tells me is it hit a power limit throttle at this point and said, uh-oh, we're cutting clock speeds, and it pulled the temperature back down. This one's letting the device heat up and continue working. It's continuing to use 25 watts continuously where this is limited to 14 watts. That's pretty awesome. Now that may eventually pull back. I'm not sure what it's going to do here, but I don't think I've seen it power limit throttle yet where you, this yellow flashing is showing you that the SP4 really is not keeping up. Oh, there it goes. Starting to power limit throttle on the new Surface Pro side. So let's see where it ends up. Okay, before the graph gets too far away from us, I want to sh show you the drastic pullback when it started to, to throttle on the SP4. And look at the, um, the new Surface Pro. A, it took about three minutes before throttling kicked in, where this kicked in pretty much in 90 seconds or so. So there's a lot more thermal capacity up front on this thing, but it does eventually start to throttle. That said, once it's throttling, you know, and I'm actually, it's, it's summer, and I'm in a fairly warm room, and this is able to maintain 16 watts, and this can only maintain 13 watts. And knowing the SP4, that's going to drop down to... 12 watts before too long. I don't know what the new Surface Pro is going to do. Maybe it's able to maintain that 16 watt advantage for a while. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that the new Surface Pro is able to maintain by itself a 16 watt uh, load where the Surface Pro 4 can only handle a 12 watt load continuously with no help. Um, that said, now that they're both heated up, I'm going to rerun this benchmark and compare numbers. Because with everything hot, they should start throttling a lot quicker. And um, you can already see how much faster this device is than this one. I've not been noticing that the new one loads a lot quicker, which it should. The it's got you know it's it's got a four gigahertz processor, where this only has you know three point something. So on the second round, we're really s simulating uh, extended load gaming, and the new Surface Pro is maintaining anywhere from six fifty to seven hundred megahertz. And this one kind of is getting bumped down to 540 to 600. And the clock speed's about 300 megahertz higher on the new Surface Pro as well. And you can see we're back to it, you know, about 12 watts maintained. Where on the new Surface Pro side, 16 watts maintained. So I think that's, that's pretty definitive. I like this benchmark because when it stops, it really is still running. So, um... Now that we've kind of determined where these devices are able to sustain load, um, I'm going to go ahead and plug the fan in and see what happens on the new Surface Pro and see if we can get it to sustain maybe something like the, the Surface Pro 4 could maintain with a fan, you know, 18 watts, which it was a big advantage because it was at 12. This one's already maintaining 16. And if I put the fan on, it might be able to maintain, well, it'd be cool if it was 25 plus, but let's just, let's just see what happens. This might take a second.
I'd like to note that in heat soaked uh, device environment the new Surface Pro got 32 frames per second where this got 25.5 so what that tells me is in extended load so for any gaming stock with without anything this device is 25 percent faster than the old i7 which is pretty cool because when this i heard oh you're moving to kb lake well great i don't really care because kb lake versus sky lake there's not really any any improvement in process between the two you know the the instructions per clock is very, very, very close. But the difference here is the fact that Kaby Lake runs cooler, which opens up overhead to boost clock speeds um, on the new Surface Pro device, allowing it to maintain 18 watts all by itself, where before you could only maintain 12 watts. So got an awesome boost here on the new Surface Pro side. Now you can see that fan starting to cool things off a little bit. It's starting to maintain uh, 19 watts, and you can see that the uh, frequencies are starting to push up into 850 range, and the cores also rising. Oh, there we go. Already at 21 watts of power with that little fan. Are you guys bored yet? I feel like this is so fun. <laughs> Geeking out. So this is pretty cool. So with just that fan, the old Surface Pro, it's probably getting a little bit of the wind from the fan, but it's, it's maintaining 14. This is at 23 watts by itself. So let's, let's, let's just skip ahead and uh, go ahead and pull out the big guns I've got a huge box fan right here and I'm gonna turn that thing on and see where that takes us in terms of TDP I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that this little fan is gonna allow you to pull out 24 watts of gaming power which is pretty cool let's turn this bad boy on Okay, so let's run one more benchmark with uh, the fan pointed on the back of it just to see what sustained, sustained gaming performance could be like with a big fan on it or a very cold room. Thirty watts. So my guess is that the chip is calibrated to not exceed 25 watts extended if it fits the temperature parameters, which uh, is pretty dang good. Um, a, by itself, it, it didn't limit all the way down to like something like 12 watts. It was able to sustain without any assistance 18 watts, and now you're looking at uh, 25 sustained watts if you keep keep it really cold um, and we'll get a benchmark number here we'll see how well it does okay so there you have it 41.1 okay guys so how do we do well we found out that the new surface pro is able to handle 18 watts of power uh, versus the 12 watts that the surface pro 4 could do unassisted with any extra cooling or anything so that's a really cool result so 25% more performance in gaming graphics a more a higher TDP allows it to have a lot higher clock speed and that translates directly into sustained gaming performance on this device now with a fan assist we also saw that we could maintain 25 watts 
of clock speed pushed through this device, which is pretty cool. This is a thin little device maintaining 25 watts. Um, the Surface Pro 4, even with a fan, sometimes only got up to about 22. Um, so really cool result there. The other really neat thing that we discovered was the fan on the SP4 is much louder than the new Surface Pro fan. In fact, I can barely, I can't even hear the new Surface Pro fan unless I put my ear right up to it over the, the Surface Pro 4 fan. So really cool results. Um, there's also more things that we're going to cover on the new Surface Pro device. We're going to talk about all the other great things about the new Surface Pro 4 that it has over the last generation. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. We're going to have lots of Surface coverage and you're going to like it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.